Hello everybody, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Aurora 4X. So, we're continuing on from last episode. We found two new classes of our Cairns aliens, which I believe are Precursors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these guys are the Precursors. Um, so, what do we know about them? So, we've got... We know that they've got magnetic confinement fusion, which means they're going to be fast. Um, uh, what we, but these are completely new classes, right? Cosmic Liberty and Rainbow, Rainbow Sky. So, Rainbow Sky and Cosmic Liberty, we've got one each, and we have nothing about them except their estimated tonnage, because we spotted them on active. Um, so, what we'll do is, first of all, Canberra 5, get the hell out of there. In the meantime, shoal water. You better be loaded up and ready. So, refuel, resupply, um, load ordnance. They don't have much maintenance clock or crew, and that's fine. Alright, they're only doing 6,000 kilometers a second, which means the camera should hopefully be able to get a decent run out. Um, what I might do is I might actually detach Prespa and Shoal Water. And I split them off because these guys are going to be a hell of a lot faster and they might be able to get in there uh, before... Uh, they might be able to get in there faster. Right. Um, where I'm definitely going to also need Waramanga as well. So bring Waramanga along because we're going to need them uh, for the active sensor. Okay. Um, and you also get moving as well. Um, do we want to bring the Zims? They're five... They're just shy of 6,000 kilometers. We have an effective boarding rate of 3,000. You know what? If we deal some engine damage, we might be able to uh, board one of those. So, sure. Bring them along as well. Uh, we have several marine companies so yeah let's bring everyone excellent um bandicoot onto shoal water we also have some, have some of our advanced to brook two fighter bombers as well um all right let's see how we do so we're definitely gonna gonna get intercepted and i think we're gonna lose uh this one. Uh, what I might do is I might turn the actives off and see if we can escape them that way. Probably not though. I'm pretty sure their sensors are going to be a lot better than mine. Especially because it's 16 kilotons, so yeah, I think I'm going to turn them back on and hopefully uh, be able to get some more information out of them. I do, t I do tend to use my cam my um, survey ships as sacrificial lambs anyway, so no big deal. Uh, turn the actors back on. How we're doing? Yeah, wherever they are. It looks like it might be working. Oh, silent running again. Let's see how we do. 
Of course, they couldn't be back enough to fire off missiles at me, but oh well. We're moving to try and intercept though, so... <clears throat> we'll just have to wait and see. Hmm. I think we will be able to get um, some boarding action on one of these two anyway, because they are... Um, they're a little bit slow. They're slower than my beam ships, right? That means that my beam ships can get in and uh, pew pew at them a little bit at low damage, strip off some armor, deal some component damage, and hopefully break some engines or knock out their fuel tanks without destroying the ships outright. Um, and that should hopefully be enough to get my boarding ships. Um, Yeah, um, that should hopefully be enough for my boarding ships to uh, slow them down enough to get my boarding ships into range um, and get some uh, more boarding action. Assuming, of course, that they're still in system because, you know, they might have decided to just leave. Although I am really curious as to where the hell they came from in the first place. They were heading up this way. Are there any jump points up that way? Crusaders recover. Okay, these guys are on board, but these guys weren't. <sighs> um, I guess I forgot to dock these guys after um, scrapping the workers. Um, oh well. Um, yeah, that's fine. How far out are they? It's taken them a while. So these guys are 20 hours out. These guys are 8 days out. Crazy is 22 days out. So, yeah, these guys are definitely going to get there first. The missile boats are the slow, the slow ones, so they're going to um, be a little bit slower to... They're going to be slowing down the, the task group. I wonder if these guys are beam or... Okay, there we go. So, shell water. Uh, move to the Townsville jump point. Actually, we'll move to the Cairns jump point and then the Townsville jump point. No. Let's go to Townsville first, then Cairns. And just do a sweep. We don't have a fuel tanker though, so uh, hopefully they've got the range. Okay, but now we can get the Canberra to back through Townsville. Um, and we're going out through Southport. Um, yes. Okay. 
<clears throat> we'll see. Okay, now we'll see what we can find. Uh, if they're not in here, if we don't run into one by going to the two jump points, I'm going to go through Cairns because they were going in a generally northward direction. Um, so it could be possible that they're heading to in, um, trying to get into Cairns um, and see what's up there. So we'll see what we can find. Well, they could just still be sitting around the sun. Yeah, I'd say they're still sitting around the sun. There they are. Okay. So, what we will do is contacts follow at 100,000, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million kilometers. Yeah, about a thousand kilometers a second faster than they are will be fine. And what we'll need is we'll need to make sure that our point defenses are operational. Uh, point blank mode, yes, 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 yes. Sheens. Uh, let's go for one anti-missile. And we'll clear the fleet target as well. So one versus one point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense. Good. Uh, these guys just have the lasers and they are all ready to go. And you've got nothing. So, oh well. Okay. Now we'll see what they've got. Okay, it looks like they're going to be beam ships because they are definitely closing within uh, closing to range real quick. I would like to test the point defenses. Sheehan. Uh, I want. Six launchers only at the Cosmic Liberty and that's for the Pixie and for the Sheehan I want six launchers of Arrow E's at the Rainbow Sky They're probably going to have quite substantial uh, point defenses. And they would definitely would have seen us by now. They're definitely firing missiles, by the, judging by the slowdown. Okay, so one of them is going to be definitely missile boat. Yep, one of them is definitely a missile boat. Yeah, 
Oh, they've broken off. I would say the Cosmic Liberty is a missile boat and Rainbow Sky would be a beam boat. Because Rainbow Sky seems to be closing distance and Cosmic Liberty is not. <clears throat> Okay, let's test Rainbow Sky first. Does not appear to have any AMM capacity. Boom. Okay. So, that wasn't too impressive. But it doesn't have AMMs. That's the important bit. Uh, as for Cosmic Liberty... No, it doesn't look like there's any AMMs either. And again, several hits, nothing impressive. So I think we can actually just bombard these guys from long range. Uh, so I will cleave these and I'm going to use four missiles at a time only. Open fire, we got fire. And cease fire. I suspect, I suspect that we'll be seeing their missiles very soon as well. Very, must be very slow missiles if we haven't seen them yet. How did we do? Did it just slow down? No. Bang, there we go. Okay, fire another salvo. So obviously the reason why I am firing only a few missiles at a time is because A, um, we can get away with it in that um, quite simply they don't have the point defense capability to actually shoot these things down right so we can get away with smaller ones we don't have to worry about or will it hit or not um, stuff like that and our hit rate is also quite excellent as well the other one of course is that I'm trying to not actually kill them outright um, you know oh they do have point defense fire okay it's just apparently quite pathetic um, yeah, I'm trying not to kill them outright, um, so that hopefully we can board them and get some nice technologies. Because I kind of really want those engines. Bang, there we go again. I might end up uh, getting the beam ships to close in. Uh, that's another hit. But then again, why? put my guys at risk when I can just keep doing this. And I think that's one of the key one of the keys to combat in Aurora. Um, that is or you know reasonably successive uh, successful combat is that you you shouldn't necessarily take risks 
that you don't have to. Like, yes, I could close in and open fire with beams, but why would I do that when they can't catch me? Their defenses are virtually ineffective against my missiles. They and they basically cannot hurt me at all in the slightest way, um, as it is, you know. So why bother um, giving them the opportunity to hurt me when I could just not? I might actually let them close a little bit further so I can get so I can see if they have any shields because if they don't have if they have shields and all of this is just basically redundant. But it is saying that it's that it's uh, got armor levels, so mm, I guess we'll see. Yeah, let's close to ten million. Uh, Rainbow Sky is the one we want. Follow at ten million. I think they might be trying to launch missiles again. Judging by the... Yeah, still, yeah. Still the same time frame. Okay, I think we're back now. Yeah, there they are. So yeah, it looks like they just didn't have the capability to... Wow, okay, those are actually impressive speed. 32,000, I think that's about twice our point defense speed, so we're going to be taking about a 50% penalty to point defense. Okay, so some people were ske were skeptical about oh how do uh, how do you know that point defense uh, tracking bonus um, is actually doing anything? Um, how do you know? Uh, have you tr tested whether it's in fire control range or whether it's active? Uh, do, do you see this percentage here? This percentage here is the tracking bonus that you have accumulated against the salvo. That's it. So the game flat out tells you that you currently have or you're supposed to have a 40% tracking bonus to that uh, salvo. And you can see here, there you go. That's the tracking bonus, right? So that's the bonus that you should be getting. So as you can see, I've got a 42% tracking bonus against this thing. All right. And I'll probably get up to 44. And for some reason, my guys aren't firing, but we'll take one salvo. 44, okay. So 44% is what it should be at. All right. So we've got base chance to hit is 128. Okay. So base chance to hit is 96%. Okay. So 96% because of the 10,000 kilometer range. All right. So the base chance to hit is based purely on range between your target and your max range for your fire control, which is 120,000, or I think double that actually. Um, so 96% because we're firing at 10,000 kilometers. Uh, crew grade boosts it to 128%. Okay. And then you take the uh, tracking speed penalty. Okay. So tracking speed is. Uh, 33, uh, 16,000 divided by 33,000, which is 33,000 divided by, no. 16,000 tracking speed divided by 33,000, um, missile speed, which is 48%. Okay. So you take your 128%. So you take your 128% base fire rate and you multiply it by your 
uh, tracking uh, final tracking penalty, and you get 62%. And as you can see, modified by the tracking speed, our hit rate is 62%. Okay. Now I've te we've tested these with um, with basically all tur turrets, non-turreted, virtually every weapon, virtually every beam weapon in the game, whether it can be turreted or no. Um, and we've tested this with salvos of hundreds of missiles and flat out the hit rate. So, you know, when, when it says 62%, we shoot down approximately 62% of, of the missiles in the salvo. Um, granted, we'll be using speeds where that tracking, where that final outcome is closer to like 10% and losing targets in the process uh, until we put like a thousand shields on them. But still, um, the tracking speed here, which does not factor in the 42% uh, bonus, is ha the, the percent, the actual hit rate. That is how many missiles you will actually shoot down. Um, this 42% is supposed to negate the percentage of the penalty, right? So instead of 48%, you would then add another 42. So plus 0.42. So you should end up with approximately 90% penalty, all right? So that would mean that 128 times 0.90. So we should still be getting... 115% hit rate against these missiles, but we're not, right? This turret fired and five of them missed because they've only got a 62% accuracy. They should be getting 115, but they're not. They're getting 62. So to anybody who says, have you tested this? Does Are you sure that it works? It doesn't work. Simple as that. So that is why your track and bonus tech is at the moment completely worthless. But thankfully, we do have a decent tracking speed and we have a good crew bonus, so we are able to shoot them all down. Um, and for some reason, uh, I believe that these things are probably set to the wrong PD mode. Yeah, they're set to the wrong PD mode. So we'll go ahead and set them correctly. There we go, that's better. Actually, is that the correct range? Uh, 10,000, is that 10 million or? No, 10, 000, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So 10 is 100,000, so 100 will be a million. No, 120, I think it was, that we used. Okay, good. <clears throat> and we're not getting very much interception because the missile hit rate is also quite pathetic. Um, what is it? 32%. So, if we can shoot down one missile, it'll do. Okay. Yeah, no problems. We have enough point defense to easily shoot down anything that can throw at us. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay, so we'll get to within that 10 million range. And then we'll see what's what. We'll see if they have any actual AMMs as well. If they have AMMs, then they might shoot at us. But I don't think they do. Uh, but we are within their range, and I do want to test exactly how many uh, AMMs they shoot, if they do have any. So we'll get this to open fire. 
And we'll get this guy to open fire as well, because why not? We'll fire another volley. No, it does not look like, look like they have any AMMs at all. It's a little bit disappointing. I want to see exactly how many they fire at you. You know what? I think if I do one missile at a time, that will probably be best, and that way I can just... Uh, <clears throat> we can just open fire in general. There we go. Weapon fire, weapon fire. Oh no, they can't actually shoot him down, huh? Alright, never mind. It would be nice if you can see like that armor rate, armor status. Uh, Rainbow Sky, let's see. Rainbow Sky. Ah! We knocked out an engine. Okay, that's within boarding range. Um, so that is going to be sufficient. So we'll just remain within range until the boarding teams can get, it, get, up, get up to it. I think we actually knocked out their engines completely. Let's put three launches on there and fire at Rainbow Sky. No, 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 no. Not Rainbow Sky. Do not fire at Rainbow Sky. We want to fire at Cosmic Liberty. That's the one we, we still need to cripple. How are we doing? Still working. Cosmic Liberty, launch another salvo. Ah, when's a boarding team due to arrive? 14 days, geez. I don't know if we have 14 days worth of fuel. Okay, we've broken down their speed. All right, so I think at this stage, how long, how much fuel do we actually have on these guys? We're at half tank, and we've got uh, we got. The rivers only have 22 days, so I think we've got about 14 days.
Uh, Shoalwater 2 has arrived. Uh, but it's only got the bombers. Uh, we have to wait for Crete to arrive. Um, let's stitch... 14 days, 14 days. How can we get them here faster? What kind of range... The Zims only have a billion kilometers range, so they just don't have the range for it. No, we're just going to have to drag it out. All right. So what I'll do is I'll put a break in, in the episode now um, as they are functionally crippled and we will... Um, I'll actually get it to maintain from Cosmic Liberty now. Um, I'll put a break in the episode here and we will conduct some proper boarding operations. Okay. Uh, we'll conduct some boarding operations on some active ships, um, and we'll do that tomorrow. Thank you for watching. See you then.